Hello, welcome to question 2, paper 5. In this video, we are going to... I'm just going to give you a very quick review about what the question is about and the skills that they are testing you with. I will not go into details. For details, you can watch the other videos, especially if there are certain skills that you think that you might need a little bit help on. But if you think that you're okay and you're good to go, let's jump straight into the question. So for question 2, right, you are normally given an equation or a relationship, but there are a few types of relationship or possible relationships that they can give you. The easiest one that you can hope for is the linear one, our favorite y equal to mx plus c. And if not, sometimes we will have exponents, sometimes we will have power. So if you're interested in this, you can watch in the detailed video, but CIE expects or you are expected to be able to, based on the equation, linearize the graph, meaning you understand how to obtain a straight line graph based on whatever equation that they throw at you. Okay, And from the straight line graph, you can tell what the gradient and the y-intercept is. So if you don't know, jump to that video, then maybe come back here again. So the second skill that they will test you is uncertainty identities. So in case you forget, uh, once upon a time, identity was a thing, but then you forgot already. So I'm just going to provide some common uh, identities for uncertainty. Let's say uh, the uncertainty, let's say you want to find, so this is the first uncertainty. If A is equal to B, plus minus c, then the uncertainty in a will be the uncertainty in b plus the uncertainty in c. Okay, so uncertainty will always be at, because whenever you, you measure something or you use a data and you use it in your calculation, the more data you use, your uncertainty piles up. You already know this in your AS. So regardless whether you plus or minus, this one has to be plus. Uncertainty is an added on thing. Okay, so this is the absolute uncertainty, your delta A. Hang on, let me label again in case you've forgotten everything now. Absolute. It's a bit like uh, sometimes after exam, you go through this thing called temporary temporary memory loss and then you forget all your physics it's like you die in minecraft you know then you drop all your things then you have to go and find back again absolute uncertainty okay never mind now nah. this is a hack hopefully it helps you find back the things that you have forgotten okay number two this absolute uncertainty this delta a is absolute uncertainty of a lah, okay so number two yeah, sometimes a uh, factory reset, everything forget. Leo. So install back lo, the software, install back. Install back the software if you forget everything. Alright, if A is equal to B multiplied by C, I might as well, la, I just divide by D. La. Okay, then the uncertainty in A, you see, uh, we use three values, right? Then it will be take, you will take the uncertainty in B plus the uncertainty in C plus the uncertainty in D. But you also will remember that we actually need to add the percentage uncertainty because the units are inconsistent for addition. All right. So this is another one that is pretty common to use. And for this one, yeah, uh, so many times already you have used this. Okay. All right. So Unit is inconsistent. You add absolute uncertainty. Maybe this is kilogram. Maybe this is meter square. So kilogram plus meter square is what? I also don't know. All right. So the third one is if A is uh, B to the power of N. Ayo, the power, power one. Nah, this, type of, uh, this type of relationship. Then how? Uh? Then if you want to find the uncertainty in A over A. If you happen to know N, then your life is significantly easy already. You will take N uncertainty in B over B. Okay? If the power is negative, uh, if let's say, what happens if the power is negative? So, if let's say, right, your power is negative, it doesn't matter what this one is, la, because if let's say, you take negative 4, okay, you know what, in fact, this example, the example that, uh, that we'll first discuss will involve a negative power. So don't worry about it, okay? So 
I think this general one is good enough. Proceed to real examples lah, so that the video is not too long. Number four is the uncertainty for log or lawn. Okay. So this one, you probably need to watch the special video because I will derive the relationship or the, or the identity. If let's say you stare at an equation very long and you don't know how to find the uncertainty, there's a fail-safe method. Anyhow also can use one. Okay, so let me just draw a box around the identities that are important. The fail-safe method, right, is this one. If you totally don't know what to do, you can take, if let's say the uncertainty in, you want to find the uncertainty in A, you can take the maximum possible value of A, subtract the minimum possible value of A, divide by 2. Don't care what equation you use to calculate A. You take the range, divide by 2. Half the range. So if you're familiar with paper 3, you would know that this is an, an acceptable uncertainty method. La. So I'm just going to put a, this is your insurance. La. But it's a little bit problematic because you have to do a lot of calculation. Yeah. So this is half the range. Okay. So I'm just going to write here. Half the range of readings. Alright, so moving on. So once you find the uncertainty, right, it's because they probably provide you a table. Okay, so once you have that, we will do something that we are very familiar with, which is to plot our data. So when you plot data, right, you have to make sure that the plots are clean and you plot at the corner plots. So this is a lot like paper tree. So we're just going to look through a sample to see what I mean. Normally, when you are given a graph like this, all the plots should be at the corners. So you can see this candidate, he or she has plotted at the corner. This one is at the corner. Okay. This one is at the corner. Okay. And please use cross law. If you use blobs, sometimes your blobs are too big. And, and most of the time, the examiners do not accept blobs. All right. So only corner plots. And the second thing to note is that you will draw error bars. So I'm going to draw some error bars with you. But how the error bar looks like should follow how the uncertainty that you calculated using these identities. Lah. All right. And then the error bars must be symmetrical. Okay. Because your uncertainty will look something like A is equal to 4.0 plus minus 0 0.2. Mah. So the plus minus 0 0.2 is symmetrical. You cannot plus 0 0.2 but minus 0 0.1. That makes no sense. Okay. And it can be either horizontal or vertical depending on whether your A is on the horizontal axis or on your vertical axis. So don't have it in your head that oh, error bar must be vertical or error bar must be horizontal. Different year, different question. Okay. So once you draw the graph, we are going to uh, label the best fit and the worst fit lines. Okay. After we draw them. And when you draw a line, you have to label, okay? And then, that's all, should pass through all the error bars. So we'll do a, you can jump to the question video after this so that you get a better idea of how this is being marked. But if you've forgotten how to draw a best fit line, go and get a refresher on that, all right? So once we calculate, so what is new in paper 5, you might be wondering, because the best fit line is new, the worst fit line is not. Plotting is new, the error bar is not. So previously, whenever we do paper three, right, we ignore the uncertainty in question one. Notice in question one, when you conduct the experiment, we never ask you to write uncertainty. We never ask you what's the uncertainty in your reading. We just ask you to draw the graph and the best fit line and then do some calculation. So here you are going to repeat the same process. The only difference is that you are not going to do the experiment. We will give, G-I-F-T, give you the data. And even better, we even give you the axis. So the axis is given, the data is given. Your job is to plot the graph and do the error analysis and do some calculation. Okay. So from here, you are going to need to draw a gradient. Uh. So as usual, uh, your gradient, please draw a triangle with a dotted line. Yeah. So the data is given. So if the data is given and the axis is given, then everybody's graph must be the same. Uh, correct. Does this mean that if you make a mistake, it will be very easy to detect? Also correct. Because we expect to see all identical graphs from all candidates. So let's say, for example, this is your graph. Okay. 
you already draw your best fit line. Always label. Miss paper three, no need to label one because paper three you only draw one line. Uh. Oh. But paper five, you are going to draw two lines. Maybe this is your best fit line because okay, I'm not going to draw anything else or plot. And then maybe somewhere here, this is your worst fit line. Okay. We will learn how to draw them in the actual example. Then it will make more sense to you. So you draw these two lines. You This means that you have to find the gradient. So you're going to find this gradient here, gradient of the best fit line. You read this coordinate, right? You read this coordinate. So please show the substitution. Uh. If you want to help your examiner so that the examiner can help you give you your marks, please write the coordinates here. Lo. Okay, so your working should look like this. Let's say this is x1, y1. This is x2, y2. So you will have y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1. Okay, so this one, you see a dotted line. So if you draw like this, do you think it's correct? No, la. your line should be dotted. So why can't you draw full lines, you may ask? Well, that is probably because if you draw full lines, I begin to not know what is your graph anymore. Is your graph the vertical line? Is your graph the horizontal line? I am confusion. Okay, so draw, vertic draw dotted lines. Repeat the process again. So the triangle standard for paper 3 applies here. Uh. Triangle must be big, big. And then you find the gradient of the worst fit line. Okay, so I'm just going to write this one as best fit. So I'll put MB or M best. I know worst fit line feels like a really bad name for the poor line. But CIE calls it worst fit ma. Okay, if you are feeling like extra free, you can find the gradient of three lines, but you don't get extra mark. So why would you go through the trouble? Okay, so here you can find another coordinate, take the coordinate, repeat the process again. All right, so make sure you show your substitution clearly and write your answers. All right, okay. So when you draw your best fit line and your worst fit line, you will have Y intercept. A common mistake for the candidate is to just, oh, I extend here. Lo. But you guys, if you extend, when you extend, right, the y-intercept might not be the coordinate that you read off on this axis. Okay, this probably is not y-intercept. Why? Because most past year, the horizontal scale is a jump scale. doesn't start from 0, 0. Okay, because it doesn't start from your origin, then you cannot expect to directly read off unless you're super lucky. La, they go and start from the origin, then it must be your happy year. Okay, so we are going to have to use y equal to mx plus c to find your y-intercept. It's the same thing as paper 3. You will repeat the process two times. Best fit line, y equal to mx plus c. Worst fit line, y equal to mx plus c. And your best fit line and worst fit line will have two values of c. So I'm just going to call this c best, not a fissure. And then this is c worst. Okay, lo. Why are we doing this? Uh? Ah, because we want to find the absolute uncertainty of the gradient and the y-intercept. And how do we find that absolute uncertainty? We will take the gradient of the best fit line minus the gradient of the worst fit line because we found two gradient lines. How do we find the absolute uncertainty of y-intercept? We take the y-intercept of the best fit line minus the y-intercept of the worst fit line. Okay, that difference is the uh, uncertainty. If you are interested in knowing a bit more detail about why is it that way and why don't we divide by two, then you can jump to the actual in-depth video. But this is just a refresher, the kind of thing that you watch because you forgot everything. Lah, all right. So here, just by the way, right, this is a modulus. Lah. Sometimes your worst fit line can be steeper. Sometimes the y-intercept can be bigger. So take the difference. Ah, yes. So watch another video. And also at the same time, um, 
I would highly recommend that you practice and make sure that you fall within the time limit. A recommended uh, healthy duration to finish this question would be around 35 minutes. Half an hour is better. Alright, so I wish you all the best and I'll see you in all the remaining videos for Paper 5. Take care.